Today I'm going to show you the exact process that I use to dial in my CO2 perfectly for my planted aquarium so that your plants pearl, your fish are happy and safe, and algae goes away. A lot of people, they set up CO2 and they kind of just expect magic, but the reality is it all comes down to how you dial things in. By the end of the video, you're going to know exactly when to turn on the CO2, how to set the bubble counter, and how to measure and verify that you're injecting enough CO2 for your plants. So if you find these no BS guides helpful, at all, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. All right, let's go. The most important idea surrounding CO2 tuning is that we're not chasing bubbles per second. The goal is predictable, stable CO2, and the most accurate method for evaluating if you're injecting correctly is the pH drop method. You measure your degassed pH and you aim for about a 1.0 to 1.2 pH drop by the time the lights turn on. Most hobbyists, including myself, use a drop checker to visually confirm things, but let's make sure that both systems work together. And once you dial things in and do your measuring, you can pretty much just rely on the drop checker moving forward. To begin, first measure your degassed pH. So what you're gonna do is take a cup of tank water and leave it out overnight. Then you'll take a pH reading in the morning. That number is gonna be your baseline. So let's say it reads 7.4. Your target pH by the time lights turn on would be 6.4 to 6.3. That's the scientific way to measure things and ensure there's enough CO2 dissolved in your water. A CO2 drop checker with true four degree KH solution is a delayed but extremely helpful confirmation tool. The reaction does lag behind your actual CO2 levels by about an hour, but once your CO2 routine is stable and you've done your measuring, the color will tell you if things are generally on track. You're aiming for a nice light lime green, not blue, not yellow, and you want that by about 30 to 45 minutes into your photo period. So if it stays blue, you're under injecting CO2 or you're starting CO2 too late. If it drifts into yellow, your CO2 is possibly too high and you should keep an eye on potential fish gasping. But if the fish are okay and the plants are healthy and pearling, this is okay. The drop checker is just there to give you a visual estimate without constantly having to measure pH. Now let's talk about CO2 timing. This is where a lot of people struggle. Your CO2 should turn on approximately one to three hours before the lights turn on. Plants are gonna need that full CO2 level waiting for them the moment the photo period starts. If your pH is still dropping after the lights are already on, plants start the day underpowered and algae can take advantage of that. When the lights power on, your tank should already be sitting at peak CO2. Once your start time is approximately correct, this is where you can start adjusting your bubble rate. Begin moderately for safety purposes and check your pH every 20 to 30 minutes as the CO2 ramps. And you're gonna wanna increase the bubble rate until you hit that target pH drop by lights on. In with everything scientifically tuned in with this method, your drop checker should reliably shift to that light lime green early in the photo period, and then it should stay there. Once you dial this in, no need to touch anything else. Stability is so important. Sure, the first few days of your tank's life, you're gonna wanna dial things in, make some adjustments, but constantly touching everything is gonna really stress your plants out and cause CO2 instability, which can lead to algae and all sorts of issues. So dial things in, set it, forget it. This next part is very easy to ignore, but it's so vitally important. Distribution is what makes or breaks CO2, even when your injection rate and your timing are perfect. So here's how we get it right. In a perfect circulation setup, your inflow and your outflow should be on opposite corners of the tank, with the in-tank diffuser directly across from the outflow. If you're using an inline diffuser, even better. You want circulation along the entire tank, down the front glass, the back glass, and along the substrate. It's really important to keep your diffuser or inline atomizer clean. And make sure your plants or your hardscape or equipment aren't creating dead zones. Good flow and good circulation are what gets CO2 to the plants and thus improves pearling and prevents that good one day, bad the next issue that people run into with inconsistency. While dialing things in, it's important to watch your livestock closely. Signs of too much CO2 include fish gathering near the surface, rapid breathing, or unusual stillness. If you see any of this, reduce your CO2 immediately. A healthy tank is gonna show normal swimming, no gasping, and steady behavior, even right at peak CO2. This is because your plants are photosynthesizing and producing oxygen. When everything is tuned and dialed in correctly, every day is gonna follow the same pattern. 
CO2 will turn on one to three hours before the lights do, and pH will drop steadily and hit its peak by lights on. And your draft checker shifts into that ideal light lime green. And then CO2 turns off one to two hours before the lights turn off, and the pH rises overnight. Fish stay comfortable, plants grow beautifully, and algae just doesn't have a foothold. If things aren't working and they feel off, the usual suspects are pretty straightforward. A blue drop checker means your CO2 is coming on too late and or the bubble rate is too low. Purling one day and not the next means CO2 levels aren't stable and or your flow is inconsistent. Algae showing up despite high CO2 levels is almost always because your peak pH drop isn't happening early enough in the photo period. And most importantly, if your fish show stress, pull back and retune the system. Once your CO2 is dialed in, everything just operates so much better, including your lighting and your fur. So if you found this no BS guide helpful, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you don't miss future no BS guides. And also let me know down below in the comments, what are your questions regarding CO2? And if you need one-on-one -on -one attention for your aquarium, you can schedule a consultation with me. That's linked in my link tree on my socials. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you guys and gals next time.